Hello there, and today we're going to be reading Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Fax Machine Summoner. I haven't uploaded in like a week, but we're back with a Friday upload, and I'll probably start uploading again some more. But yeah, if you guys want me to upload more, then uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel, because support means a lot. And yeah, if we could hit 400 subscribers by June, that would be cool. So yeah, anyway, let's get straight into it. Uh, and this is by Icy Opportunity 9 on Reddit, so yeah, anyway... Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Fax Machine Summoner. Sunday. I wasn't expecting anything interesting to happen today, but I found a bunch of fax machines in my room when I woke up this morning. I had no idea where those fax machines came from, and I don't even think I'd ever thought about fax machines until then. It wasn't until breakfast that I discovered that I somehow acquired a strange new ability. For better or for worse, this was just the start of the madness. So apparently I can now summon fax machines out of thin air. I don't know how I got that ability, but I reckon I could get some good use out of it. I mean, fax machines do cost about 100 each, and I summoned 50 of them, so that's an easy $5,000 right there. At this rate, I could, become a, I could become a millionaire thanks to fax machines. I might even drive every single fax machine company in the world out of business thanks to this. There was another advantage to this ability that I hadn't even thought about until this afternoon. Mom and Dad had gone furniture softening and left us his kids at home. Roger was still sleeping when he left, so I was responsible for Manny. At least I was until he decided to insult me. Ploopy. I thought Mom banned all of us for saying the P word. But Manny got exempt because of course he did. I tried to ignore him and focus on becoming a fax on focus on becoming a fax machine mag magnate, but he interfered with my thoughts. It didn't end well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I thought of the fax machine forming in Manny's chest because shortly afterward he exploded and his guts went everywhere. Even though that was an accident, there was no way Mom and Dad are gonna believe me. Because of that, I had to clean all of Manny's blood off the couch, floor, and walls. And once I was done with that, I had to get rid of his body in the bloody fax machine. Tossing him into the trash or burying him in the backyard would be too obvious, and I had to think of another solution. Mm -hmm. Roderick was still sleeping, and he didn't notice me stealing the keys to his van. As it turns out, driving is, in real life is a lot harder than it is in Formula 1 racing. There's so much stuff you have to look out for. I'm surprised it didn't crash. Anyway, I bundled Manny's body on the fax machine in a garbage bag, uh, when once I'd arrived at an abandoned mall outside Plainview, I dug the gra grave. I beat Mom and Dad home and prayed that they wouldn't notice Manny was gone. They didn't until dinner time. Where is Manny? At this point, I was pretty sure I was screwed. Mom asked both me and Roger what we did while Dad went out. Roger said he slept the whole time, but I could I could add in that Manny's disappearance was all my fault. And I came up with a great excuse. Manny said he wanted to play outside, so I went to him, and I took off my eye off him for a second, and he was gone. I tried to convince that Manny's disappearance was an accident, which it technically was, but she wasn't having any of it. She told me I was grounded and I was banned from playing video games for two weeks due to my negligence. My mom also said that she was getting a babysitter for me and Roger because Manny and the Manny incident made her believe that we couldn't be trusted. Both of us protested as soon as we heard that, but she said her decision was final. Oh, and Dad just sat there and said nothing. We hoped he'd try to bail us out, but I guess he was trying to avoid getting in trouble himself. I ended up spending the rest of the night in my room thinking of how I could do what I could do to become rich. And let me tell you, that made me feel much better. Monday. I don't know why it didn't dawn on me then, but I think I realized where my abilities came from. Over the summer, Mr. Jefferson's fax was he broke, and I tried, decided to try to fix it to, for him. I thought I'd be able to get his his good... I, I thought I'd be able to get in his good books for once, but I ended up electioning myself, and the fax machine was still broken once I was done with, self, well, done with it. I'm not sure why it took so long for me to gain that ability, only I guess I'd become like Spider-Man. Only instead of splitting webs, I summon fax machines. That's a pretty good superpower. Anyways, I tried to refrain from killing any other people, but restraining myself was a lot harder than I thought. At lunch, I had the pleasure of listening to Albert Sandy ramble on about the virtues of yogurt and whatever the crap he read on the internet. Did you guys know that it's physically impossible to eat yogurt on the moon without a spoon with some yogurt like by Michael Jackson sold for $10 million? Or that And Albert's... Just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the idiots at my school. There's so many of them that I could just be do some facts-based justice that it's ridiculous. I was able to restrain myself until after school when I got reminded of what I'd lost and what could have been. When we're going to be walking and when we're gonna, and we're going to be walking home all lovey-dovey together. I don't know if they have Bryce Anderson's dating hall heels, but what he said to her makes me think that he is. Don't ask me like why a total moron like Bryce thinks he deserves a perfect girl like Holly, but because he clearly doesn't. If there's something Bryce needs to know, it's that Holly belongs with me, and he can't have her. Not that he ever will. This night, I decided to put Bryce out of my misery. But I remembered that, I remember that Holly still thinks I'm Fragley, so I decided to get rid of him, too. After all, Fragley's one of the few people I hate even more than Bryce, and I could certainly do without ever seeing him again. 
I don't know if my ability work is range limited, but I hope this works. Because if I see Bryce kiss Holly, I swear I'm going to scream. As it turns out, my plan worked. Tuesday, we had an assembly to mourn Bryce and Frankly, which means I get to skip English class with Mr. Blakely. I don't think everybody mourned the death of Frankly since someone really liked him. I mean, his ex-girlfriend Ruby Bird didn't seem to be that affected by his death. On the other hand, a lot of the girls were upset that Bryce, di except upset that Bryce died, and most of them were still crying when class began. The girl, the girl's main reason for being upset that Bryce died was before they could is before they could confess their love to him. I think Bryce could have gotten a girlfriend years ago, but if he had not been so indecisive, Bryce's goons were also so affected by their leader's death. But that just made me want that. That just made them act more annoying than ever. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? After a few minutes, the goons were saying, "Drive me crazy." So I wolfed down my lunch as quickly as possible before before trying to make Holly feel better. Well, I'm not sure if that works. I can tell you that she's going to feel much better when she discovers what, I, discovers what I'm truly capable of. And by that, I don't mean the fax summoning, but something else. Speaking of faxes, I invited Rally after school and we set up a fax machine stand. Faxes are us. Unfortunately, no one bought any fax machines off of us, and there's only a dozen or so people even walks by our stand. Either it was a slow day or people just here aren't just into fax machines. But I don't even think, but I don't think this is going to cut it. Luckily, I, had a, I came up with a better idea. Sell the fax online. Besides the fact that I could attract more people, I could also make more money off of international shipping. People seem to love cheap products, so I think I'll sell these facts for really low prices. I know it sounds like a bad idea, but it'll probably pay off in the future. Besides, I'll probably end up selling millions of these things anyway. Wednesday. When I got home, when I got to school, the first thing I did was to look for Holly. I don't think I've ever said a word to her, but I reckon she's looking for a new boyfriend now that Bryce's out of the picture. When I did find Holly, I tried to get near her, but she was talking to some other girl. First, I wasn't sure what they were talking about. When I got closer, I was properly surprised. Who did it, Reese's Twinkie? Apparently, that big girl's... Is that... they have a mustache? Huh? Alright, then. Apparently, that big girl's name is Heather Punchowski. I'm pretty, I'm pre I'm surprised that a girl as popular as Holly's getting bullied, but I guess that's one of the problems being popular. Uh, either way, Heather Punchowski is about to learn a really important lesson courtesy of me. I spent the rest of the morning following Holly around to make sure that Heather Punchowski didn't touch her. I did that until first period, and luckily, Punchowski stayed away from her. When I followed Ho when I found Holly again at recess, the scene wasn't so pretty. So, Twinkie, you two chicken to fight back? What do you think you're doing here, Heather, Heather Punchowski? As soon as Ponchowski heard that, she turned around and laughed at me for being a stupid to even try to fight her. Rally just ran off to get a teacher, but I decided to show Ponchowski who the real boss was. And uh, she just gets absolutely domed by a fax machine. After I helped Holly win the fight. I don't think she won the fight. I think she just killed her. Uh, anyway, she asked me how I managed to summon a fax machine out of nowhere. Luckily, I came up with an explanation for that. Wait, where did you get that fax machine from? Well, that's just my last shop project, or at least it was. Holly was actually convinced by my lie because she thought I, w I couldn't find any logical explanation for why the facts would materialize out of thin air. On the other hand, Rally brought a t-shirt over and me and Holly got attention for attacking Heather Panchowski. I tried to justify this by accusing Panchowski of calling the fight. The t-shirt wouldn't budge. It's where Rally's gonna pay for this. Well, after I was out of attention, that is. Uh-oh. <laughs> It was almost impossible not to find summon a fax machine inside Rally or the troublemaker's brains, but I managed to resist. After that, I offered to walk Holly home to make sure no creepy guys tried to hit on her, and she actually accepted my offer. That's when I noticed these posters hanging everywhere. Have you seen me? Emmanuel Manny Hefley. Age 3. Height 37 inches. Last seen 122 Surrey Street. If found, please call 1-800-922-5443. I want to call that number, kind of. Well, it seems, it sure looks like Mom's gone crazy now that she realized that Manny won't be coming home anytime soon. My suspicions were confirmed when I went home and found that she was actually serious about getting a babysitter. Up your hose with a rubber nose. Ha ha ha. I managed to get out of the t watching TV with Grandpa by telling him that I had a lot of homework to do, and I believe or not, believe it or not, but he agreed to let me go upstairs. That wasn't exactly what I, well, that, that wasn't ex exactly what I actually did. Because I didn't have any, I didn't have that much homework to do. Instead, I sold some faxes on the internet and drooled over some pictures Holly posted online until the jo doorbell rang. And I discovered who was there. I was pretty shocked. At first, I wasn't sure what Alex Aruda was doing here, and I realized that killing Brace and Frankly at the same time was a big mistake. I mean, they both died in the same way on the same night, and if that doesn't sound sketchy, I don't know what will. I also wanted to hear it talk to me about private matters, so I braced myself and feared for the worst. Fortunately, Alex. Alex thought he was some. Alex thought he was some kind of amateur detective, and that he could solve the murders of Bryce and Frankly. So I took him up, upstairs to Manny's room, and he asked me tons of questions about Bryce and Frankly. 
How would you describe your relationship with Mr. Anderson and Mr. Fragley? Well, I wasn't really that close to either of them, if I'm honest. I thought I could out with Alex, but then he told me he had some proof from some certain someone that I slept over at Fragley's back in the sixth grade. Apparently he saw this as proof that I was lying that he was, I was going to keep an eye on me. At this point, I totally panicked and I did what I was going to do. It's a good thing no one's been in Manny's room since he vanished. I'm pretty sure it's going to smell in there. <laughs> he just killed Alex. Oh my goodness. Eventually I wasn't able to, unfortunately, eventually I wasn't able to wedge Alex's body into Manny's sock drawer. I then wiped up all the blood and washed into the fax machine I spawned in Alex's head. Before tossing it, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna miss Alex since he was super easy to copy off of. He's probably gonna spread the message I killed Bryson Fraley, which would be terrible since Holly could never love a murderer. Apart from that small mishap, nothing else happened. Though I'm starting to wondering, wonder if Alex isn't the only one who was out to get me. Wednesday, I decided to avoid Rally since I was still mad at him for letting me in detention yesterday. Instead, I went down, and so I went down to Holly so we could walk to school together. And that's when I learned that Alex was actually part of the group of detectives called the Bloodhound Gang. And what, Hall, what from what Holly told me, they're pretty stealthy. Now I've got two types of people to look out for. Those weird guys trying to hit on girls like Holly and anyone who could possibly be a member of the Bloodhound Gang. Holly said she got visited by Corey Lamb yesterday, so he's definitely one of them. Unfortunately, the other members remain a mystery, so I gotta guess who they were. I'm not sure if Albert Sandy's a Bloodhound, but what he said at lunch makes me think he's one. Anyone else think that those... Posters for that for that th missing three-year-old have anything to do with Alex Aruda's disappearance? Well, I don't know if this is just more of the usual crap that Albert tells us, but I'm not gonna let him rat me out. Free yogurt, Albert, don't go. Despite making me taking out ten seconds to make that trap, Albert still fell for it. It's a good thing Holly finished an hour later than me today, because she probably would have been horrified if she saw what I did to Albert. I ended up leaving his body near the Mingo's wood so I could blame this death on them. I then went back to school so I could walk Holly home before going to mail some of the fax machines I sold. That's when I ran into Marty Porter. Marty walked past me as quickly as possible. I noticed that he was stopping on every single house in the street. As soon as I saw that, I knew he was up to something. So I killed him and stuffed his body into someone else's green bin. <laughs> Hopefully that'll throw the bloodhounds off. Just as I was leaving the post office, I saw Corey Lamb and I just had to annihilate him for good. I mean, he tried, dared to turn, try and turn Holly against me, so he deserved to die in an alley with a fax machine in his brain. After I went home, I got greeted by my mom and dad arguing about something. Susan, you've got to let him go. This wasn't your fault. He's your son too, Frank. Aren't you going to help me? In the end, mom took off her grandma's while dad just disappeared into the basement. I didn't see either of them for the rest of the day, and to be honest, I do feel a little guilty since this was technically my fault. On the other hand, I could spend my afternoons doing whatever I want to since mom, well, who knows when mom's going to come back. When I, it's Thursday, when I got to school, everyone was talking about Albert Sandy, and from what I could tell, I'd done them a huge favor by getting rid of him. Did you hear that Albert Sandy finally died? I mean, we're finally getting a break from that idiot. Look how excited Greg is. Look, he's so happy, he's so proud. And that was only the start of my luck, because Holly actually invited me to sit at the couple's table with her. I guess she likes me too, and we can't argue with that. I'm pretty sure Rowley's mad at me for avoiding him, but me and Holly didn't care because we were lost in each other's eyes. Thought that that was the absolute best part of my day until me and Holly were walking home. I saw a bunch of kids hanging around the spot I left Albert's body, and I knew they had to be from the Bloodhound Gang. So I later went back and I unleashed the hailstorm of fax machines on them. Okay, I maybe I overdid it with the fax machines, but it was worth it to get rid of the entire Bloodhound Gang. And if my day couldn't get any better, Dad and Roderick spent the entire afternoon in the basement doing what they always did. So I spent the rest of the day playing Twisted Wizard Black. And trust me, it doesn't get any better than that. Friday. I don't know how this even happened, but the best day of my life got followed by the worst day of my life. To make matters worse, I wasn't even, it wasn't even supposed to end up like this. It all started with Holly telling me that she was going to the roller, link, roller brink with her friends. She didn't tell me if I was invited or not, but I decided to show up anyways to surprise her. Even though I barely know how to skate, I can use Holly as a support during couple skate. She wasn't, won't even know how bad I really am. Fortunately, Rally tied to my favorite to play board games together. I tried telling him that I was busy this evening, but he then started threatening me. If you don't come over tonight, I'm telling Holly about everything you did. Okay, I'm not the nice guy in the world when it comes to, but when it comes to Rally, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't, I, but I, I, okay, I, I'm sorry, guys, I'm having a bit of a stroke here. Okay, I'll admit, I'm not the nicest guy in the world when it comes to Rally, but I wouldn't say I threw, treat him like trash. Then again, who knows what Rally thinks of how I treat him. As far as I know, Holly thinks I'm a pretty nice guy, and I certainly don't want Rally to make her think I'm a total jerk. And that's how I ended up at Rally's house, playing random war games against him. How, somehow I managed not to kill him during that time, but that was pretty much because I, I thought he was trying to apologize for getting me on Holly into detention earlier this week. If only I knew that's, if only that's what he really planned on doing. So Greg, how does it feel to be a serial killer? Wait, what? 
That was when I realized that Rayleigh decided to backstab me, and he was one of the last two remaining gam members of the Bloodhound Gang. And he'd be on and he'd be and he'd been following orders from Patty Farrell of all people. That makes me pretty bad. I yelled at Rowley, tried to tell him that what an awful person he was for betraying me. Tell me, tried to tell me the exact same thing. How could you do this to me? You're my best friend. You should be helping me. Well, I was, I was until you decided a life of crime that was perfectly acceptable. All of us were accidents. You gave me those powers. You should take responsibility. Don't be ridiculous, Greg. What you've done is unforgivable, and Holly needs to know that. At this point, I was so bad at Rowley that I subbed some. I tried to summon a fax machine inside of him, but doing that required a lot of folks. Before I could do that, he took off on his big wheel. Oh, fuck. What did I just do? Oh, I didn't. Okay, I almost closed my thing. Oh, I just swore. I think that's going to demonetize me. That's unfortunate. Thanks for Rally's big wheel. I had the misfortune of yet selling, discovering yet another one of my abilities limits. I could only summon faxes while standing still. This meant trying to get Rally was a lot harder than I thought, although I didn't manage to get one of his tires. It then looked like Rally. I then I then killed Rally. Left his body in the street to make it look like an accident. <laughs> I went to take care of Pat Patty Farrell too. You're already a terrible person. Are are you listening to me? He's just trying to summon a fax machine. Okay. Well, I felt a great amount of satisfaction as I chucked Patty's body in a dumpster because I knew I'd gotten rid of the entire Bloodhound gang. Let's go, Greg. I then went to the roller rink to see if Holly wanted to skate with me. With all my incitement, I forgot to clean myself up, and sure enough, I. She noticed that before I did. Maybe I shouldn't have stood so close to Rally when I killed him. Greg, are you are, are you sure you're okay? It's it's okay if you want to go home. Holly told me that her and friends were gonna come back next week, so I ended up just I I just ended up going home so I could see if I sold any more faxes. But when I went online, I discovered something even worse. Reviews for faxes are us. Utter garbage. This, gar uh, this a hole sold me a broken fa fax machine and had the dishonesty to charge almost full price for it. Never buying anything from this dolt again. That's a rare insult. Duel is a rare insult. Well, there goes any chance of me making any money of my ability. Sure, I can become a hired assassin, but I don't know if I'm up to the task of that. And not of me. Some of the people I killed come from rich families, so I could just steal their stuff and sell it. I mean, it's better than trying to rip people off with broken faxes. Saturday. I decided to start off with Rally, since I was pretty sure his parents had gone off somewhere. Unfortunately, they came back sometime before last night and this morning, which means I had to deal with his dad. I think that Mr. Jefferson would be a little nicer to me after his son died, but he was actually even angrier than normal. Like, dude, the audacity of this guy. Mr. Jefferson told me that I was a lousy friend for not being with Rally when he crashed his big deal, and I had to take care of him. I don't know where Mr. Jefferson, where Mrs. Jefferson was, but I, I, I'm at least she was out of the house when I, I don't know how she, since I don't know how she would react to seeing her mutilated husband. After I buried Mr. Jefferson, I went back to the house to see if there was anything valuable I could sell. In the end, I settled a bunch of um, on a bunch of dusty books when I found on the shelf. I know how, I had no idea how much they were worth, but they were, looked at least fifty years old. The books were full of stamps, postcards, and these really old photos of random people. I don't know anything about these, but they look look expensive. They look expensive, so I sold them. Apparently, some of the stamps I, f I found were really rare and, and sold for a couple doll thousand dollars each. Uh, and total, I got about ten thousand, which for the lot, which is way more than I could have expected. What did I do with all the money? He's got drummies. Okay. I haven't had any drummies lately. He's on drummy deficiency right now. He's addicted. I haven't had any drummies lately because mom claims they're unhealthy, but she said she probably but since she probably won't be coming back anytime soon, I bought half a dozen boxes before going home. Dad went to work and I th and I thought he'd gotten grandpa to watch me and Roderick, but I couldn't have couldn't have been more wrong about that. I guess dad not enough of grandpa or Roderick so I, I guess Dad had enough of Grandpa, or Roderick was dating Heather or something. I wasn't really sure what to make of all this, but I could tell that I knew that Heather is Holly's sister, so she could probably tell me something interesting about Holly. So Heather, what's it like having Holly as a sister? Awful, but why are you even interested in her? She's a lesbian. Don't act like I know nothing about her. I'm her boyfriend. She said she loves me. She only likes you because you're a feminine guy. I've seen her diary and know more than you. And that was basically it for Heather. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> you just casually dopes people. I love this so much. And that was basically it for Heather. I lured her into the downstairs bathroom where I killed her, and then I went over the Hills house to confront Holly about the truth. So you think you could just betray me like this? I thought you loved me. I'm sorry, Greg, but I'm just not into the guys. I was going to come out to you about this, and then... Well, there goes my girlfriend. At least I could probably attract new, more girls with my newfound wealth. After I buried Holly, I realized what I forgot. I forgot, I forgot to do the same thing for Heather. to Heather. So when I went home, I did feel a little bit guilty about killing Holly, but then again, she deserved it because she pretended to love me. When I got home, I was greeted by Rally and by Roderick, and he was holding what looked like a balloon filled with coke. Roderick told me he found Heather's body, and then he knew I killed her. Don't ask me how he worked that out, but he said he was going to adventure, and I knew I had to defend my- Oh, and he's dead. 
Gee, that frozen Diet Coke condom was a lot powerful than I expected. Hopefully, Heather's happy I put Greg in his place. Roger Cathley. The end. Dude, that's my favorite one I've ever read. I, I really like that one. That, that's like a 10 out of 10. That's, that's my new... It's not going to be my new... It might be my new pins on the channel. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I do. I actually really... That one was so good. I actually really liked that one. Uh, but yeah... Anyway, like and subscribe if you want to see more in-depth, I mean, more um, long fan fictions like this. I'm going to bring, be bringing back the long ones. I really like I really liked reading this, and it, it makes me nostalgic from for like a couple months ago when I read longer fan fictions. But I'm bringing that back. No more of these wimpy four-minute fan fictions. Um, and, well, probably like one one a week. But I'm going to have to, I'm going to try to... On the, when, Wednesdays are going to be shorter fan fictions, and on Fridays I'm going to... Fridays and Sundays, I'm going to have these longer 20 to 30, 40 minute ones. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I really liked reading this. And yeah, anyway, like and subscribe and I'm out of here. Bye.